Hello friends and welcome to Average Classes. Okay, so today we are going to discuss the our next topic that is our Newtonian and non-Newtonian fluid, mostly about the non-Newtonian fluids that we are going to discuss. Okay, so it's going to be again a very interesting chapter, interesting class. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, yes, please do subscribe. Okay, so now we'll go for what is the difference between your Newtonian fluid and non-Newtonian fluid. Remember, Newtonian fluid, the fluid. That flows predictable regardless of the forces applied. Sir, predictable means what? You apply the force, how it flows. You do not apply the force or apply very small amount of force. It won't change its behavior. Means very predictable. For example, water. Okay, you take water, just tap gently. Okay, you won't find more, you know, any change in the viscosity. You tap harder also. Still, there you won't find any more, huh? Change in its viscosity. It won't change that much. But, 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 think about your ketchup. Think about your ketchup. Your ketchup bottle, unless you apply force to your ketchup bottle, some, your ketchup won't come. That means something is happening inside, right? Something is happening inside. That's why the ketchup is coming, uh, not coming unless you apply the force. Okay. So, the fluid that flows predictable, that flows predictable, regardless of the forces applied, we call it Newtonian fluid, Newton, Sir Isaac Newton, 1687, he gave us Newton's law of viscosity. Okay. So, non-Newtonian fluid, the unpredictable response to applied force. So, we do not know, when once we apply the force, we do not know how the viscosity changes or how the fluid behaves. For example, if you apply the force to a cornstarch solution, okay, you take a hammer and you hit it. You take a hammer and you hit it. What will happen? It won't go inside. When it's a fluid, it will behave like a solid. When it's a fluid, it behave like a solid. But that's not with ketchup. If you apply the force to the ketchup, aram se ketchup what? It with loses the viscosity and your hammer will go down. Or you take a golf ball. Okay, keep on top of a ketchup. What will happen? It it won't sink down because it's at rest. But now you drop it. Once you drop it, it will fall like it will sink. It will sink inside your tomato ketchup. Take it. So that's why with force says they become less viscous. But if you take a golf ball and you just gently keep in a cornstarch solution, it will sink. Okay. But if you force it, you will apply force and you will hit it. It won't go inside. It will bounce back. Yes. Isn't it interesting? Yes or no? Sir, we have not heard about it. Correct. So, that's be the beauty of your non-Newtonian fluids, actually. Okay. So, this is your first. For example, your water, oil, air, benzene, gases. Water is your classic example of your Newtonian fluid. Okay. In our fluid mechanics, whatever we will study further, all will be Newtonian fluid only. Okay. We don't, you know, study much about your non-Newtonian fluid. Unless this chapter. Except this chapter, we are not studying much about your non-Newtonian fluids. Okay. So, now... The second point being, Newtonian fluid obey Newton's law of viscosity. If you remember, in our lecture 3, we have discussed in detail about Newtonian, Newton's law of viscosity. Around 1687, okay, Newton told okay, the shear stress required, the shear stress required to maintain the fluid flow, the shear stress required to maintain the fluid flow is directly proportional to is directly proportional to rate of shear strain rate of shear strain or or rate of angular deformation or or rate of angular deformation or velocity gradient or velocity gradient tau is proportional to du by dy by. this is your velocity gradient this is the rate of shear strain okay samajh mein aa gaya very good so, after that what we have done is, we have removed the proportionality symbol and insert a constant. And this constant, we call it what? What we call this constant? So, we call it huh? dynamic viscosity. We call it what? Dynamic viscosity or we also call it as absolute viscosity. We also call it as huh? absolute viscosity. See, this is a property. In Newtonian fluid, which obeys Newton's law of viscosity, mu is a property of a fluid. That means mu is constant. Mu won't change much unless provided you are keeping temperature constant. Okay. At constant temperature, your mu will be 
constant for fluid regardless of the forces applied you apply how much force less force the predictable behavior of the fluid flow will continue in 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 newtonian fluid hence mu is a property of the fluid that means mu is dynamic viscosity or we call it absolute it doesn't change hence mu is what hence mu is a property mu is a property of fluid understood understood newtonian fluid if someone asks you newtonian fluid you can tell directly don't say sir the which obvious newton's law viscosity no 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 don't say like that in an interview okay you say like that he said the fluid that flows predictable regardless of the forces applied theek okay. hai then develop curiosity for the interviewer he asks acha what do you mean by predictable uh, behavior then you explain sir what up even if i'll apply force even if i you know i won't apply much force i won't find much different much difference in the flow behavior or flow pattern that means what that means what sir viscosity remains constant when the viscosity remains constant you see sir they obey newton's law of viscosity this sentence you should say on the fourth attempt not on the first attempt ki sir the anything which follow is the newton's law of uh, viscosity is a newtonian fluid no you tell that on the fourth attempt you want to show develop curiosity show them ki you know stuffs okay very good very very good so now we'll go to come to the non newtonian ha huh, non newtonian fluid like already we discussed unpredictable response that means sometimes what happen when you increase the with force say it means with increase in force okay with force say sometimes they become more viscous like corn starch sometimes they become less viscous like your ketchup like your ketchup okay so we we do not know their behavior properly that means what viscosity is not remaining constant that means what that means what your mu is not constant mu is not constant and your mu is nothing but a function of ha huh, the forces applied and time okay so your mu depends upon the forces applied also time also time that's why non newtonian fluid will be having two types one is time dependent one is time independent time dependent time independent both the course both the cases forces will be there whether with application of forces the viscosity is increasing or with application of forces the viscosity is decreasing very very good so the next question comes sir if they do not obey newton's law of viscosity if they do not obey not newton's law of viscosity then what they follow sir kya follow kar rahe so many scientists came and they gave their you know proposals but mostly we are using this one sir oswald they ha huh, way sir oswald they well he gave an equation we call it as fluid ha huh, fluid power law or or ha huh, model power law we call it ha huh, fluid power law or we also called model power law okay what he told what sir oswald oswald they will say okay what is he understood he told he told k he told this shear stress this tau shear stress is nothing but tau equal to tau yield tau yield plus tau yield plus ha huh, eta eta du by dy eta du by dy okay so this implies what is your eta where where so tau the shear stress required tau will will come to no slowly slowly i'll tell you what is tau here. okay eta the eta is your apparent viscosity c here viscosity is not constant here viscosity is not constant then viscosity changing so that's why it's not absolute viscosity it's not a property it's a apparent viscosity which changes which adapts itself with respect to forces and time that's why it is an apparent viscosity and this apparent viscosity formula what he gave k du by dy to the power n minus 1 k du by dy to the power n minus 1 this n na this is this n value is every game around the non newtonian fluid is after this n only it's very 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 
important. This n where this n is, let me write here, allow me to write here, where the n is known as flow of flow of behavior index. Where n is the flow of behavior index. Okay, model power law, it's power model. Sorry. It's power model. Apologies. Or power model law. Okay. 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 So where n is the flow, n is the flow behavior index. N is the flow behavior in, in, index. And and what is your k? Your k is the flow consistent. Con, flow k is the. I cannot pronounce that. Flow cons, cons, consistency. Flow. Okay, huh. you call power model or you call power law model one or other same only. Okay, important thing is you should understand. Okay, so power law model. So N is the flow behavior index and K is the flow consistency index. Most of the cases your K will be one. Okay, but N, N is the thing which plays here very important part. N is the stuff which plays here very, very important one. Now, now, now tell me what if N is greater than one? What if n is greater than 1? So you, you take this. What happens to your viscosity? What happens to the viscosity? It is increasing. It is increasing. You consider this also. Okay. So because n minus 1 into 1, it will become n. So when n is greater than 1, you apply the stress here. Okay. So note it down. I'll erase it. So that we can explain it properly. Okay. Note it. So I am erasing this side, okay? I am erasing the left hand side. So that we will continue with the non-Newtonian flow. Okay? So you came to know a non-Newtonian fluid, flow is unpredictable. Flow is unpredictable. That is with forces the viscosity increases or with forces the viscosity may decrease. That's why here viscosity is not absolute or property when rather the viscosity is the apparent viscosity and the apparent viscosity eta equal to huh, eta equal to k du by dy and minus 1 so what happens to your tau what happens to your tau consider let us say there is no tau yield so it becomes eta huh, sorry it becomes k du by dy to the power n minus 1 into du by dy so what happens to your tau? K du by dy to the power n. K n minus 1 into 1. What happens? Your n minus 1, they are plus 1. Correct, right? So n minus 1 plus 1, n. So this n is your nothing but flow behavior index. Now, let me, now you tell me what happens when n is greater than 1. Suppose for a fluid, for a fluid, n is greater than 1. What will happen if n is greater than 1? Tau increase the value of tau. If it increase the value of tau, what happens to the this total situation, sir? It increases. It increases means viscosity, viscosity more. So you when you apply the force, when you apply the force, when you apply the shear, what happens to the viscosity? Viscosity increases. Viscosity increases. Like that means harder the shear force. Harder the shear force or harder the shear applied, more is the viscosity. More is the viscosity. That means you can write harder the shear stress, shear force also you can write. Applied, huh, what happens? More is the, more is the, huh, visco, more is the viscosity. Like more harder you will apply the shear force, your viscosity increases. This implies I'll write. What I write? Viscosity increases. Viscosity increases with with application of uh, or with shear force. Viscosity increases with shear force. Correct. Understood. If your n is what? If your n is greater than 1. Now, what if your n is less than 1? What if your n is less than 1? What happens to this term? What happens to this? Increase the shear. What happens? n is less than 1. This decreases. 
this value decreases n minus 1 right apparent viscosity n is less than 1 ha huh? into 1 what happens to the it will increase the force what happens if your n is less sir it decreases the shear the viscosity decreases so this implies you right harder the shear stress shear stress applied ha huh? harder the shear stress applied less is the viscosity less is the viscosity this implies you can write here ha huh? viscosity decreases viscosity decreases with shear force so when you apply more shear n is already or less less than 1 so viscosity decreases viscosity decreases so what if n is equal to 1 that is your newtonian fluid right we tau equal to mu du by dy to the power n okay when n equal to 1 tau equal to mu du by dy mu du by dy viscosity is constant it doesn't it has no effect on the application of force so when n equal to 1 that is newtonian fluid if you are n is equal to 1 we call it which fluid newtonian fluid newtonian fluid sir is there any term for n less than 1 yes when n is less than 1 when the Viscosity is less with application of shear force. Means what? We will we are calling it shear thinning fluid. We call it as what? Shear thinning fluid. That is with application of. Ah, that is with application of shear. The viscosity decreases. We call them shear thinning fluid. And what if your n is greater than one? Ah, huh, viscosity is more. These kind of fluid we call them as shear. Ah. Huh? thickening fluid we call them what shear thickening fluid understood so now first we studied ha huh, first we studied newton's law newtonian fluid and non newtonian fluid first we studied newtonian and non newtonian fluid okay then in non newtonian fluid now we come to two kinds of fluid shear thinning fluid and shear thickening fluid okay pause the video and note it down Pause the video and note it down so that next topic will start shear thinning and shear thickening fluid. Take it, note it. Very good. So now we will start what is shear thinning fluid. Sir, so you already told shear thinning fluid means with application of shear force, your viscosity is less, viscosity is decreasing. That you call shear thinning fluid. I am like very, very good. So, what is an example of shear thinning fluid? Sir, tomato ketchup, you only told. There only you have written also, okay, tomato ketchup. So you apply some force to, when you apply some force to a tomato ketchup bottle, what happens? What happens? Its viscosity decreases. Viscosity, because the viscosity decreases, the fluidity increases. Because the fluidity increases, it came out of the bottle. Simple. Yes or no? It came out of the bottle. That is your ketchup example. Ketchup example is a shear thinning fluid. It's a shear thinning fluid okay see you can always you know go a little fast forward when i'm cleaning the board okay thank you so i need your cooperation while teaching you know so certain things youtube gives us gives you an option to fast forward also if you think i'm slow okay how means i'm teaching slow okay so the next one is your shear thinning fluid so now in non newtonian fluid we are reading about shear thinning fluids okay now we will study about shear thinning fluids now already we know its definition what is the definition we know ha huh. with application with the application of force the viscosity decreases these are your shear thinning fluid okay what happens to its top so you know that right second point you can write ha huh. key sir its n is less than 1 I am writing here viscosity decreases viscosity decreases with force okay. n is less than 1 these kind of shear thinning fluids this shear kind of shear, shear fluids are also known as are also known as what your pseudoplastic fluid also known as pseudo plastic fluid okay for example your blood plasma your blood plasma 
you can go for your latex paint latex paint okay that is some solutions you are using now you can go for milk also for milk okay so these are the some of example of your pseudo plastic fluid okay next we can say now why why with force with force the viscosity decreases so when they are at rest when the pseudo plastic fluid or the cyanotin fluid are at rest how they will be how you will find them sir they are randomly oriented they are randomly scattered they are randomly scattered that is what happens they are randomly scattered they are randomly scattered but when you are applying some force or when they are flowing what happens what happens they order themselves they order themselves what you can say it's when they are at rest they are randomly scattered ha huh. when they are at flow they are orderly arranged orderly arranged what happens if they are orderly arranged orderly arranged means the intermolecular the intermolecular interaction the intermolecular interaction decreases the intermolecular attraction the force of attraction between the intermolecular attraction decreases if the intermolecular attraction decreases what will happen if you apply the force easily they will flow if you apply the force easily they will flow this implies fluidity increases this implies fluidity increases fluidity increases what happens to the viscosity sir viscosity decreases decreases if a particular fluid has more viscosity it is difficult to flow that is fluidity is difficult fluidity is less if a particular fluid has less viscosity that means its fluidity is more fluidity increases means viscosity ha huh, more the fluidity less the viscosity less the fluidity more is the viscosity okay why because the intermolecular attraction interaction are less so fluidity more hence viscosity less got it you understood why with force the viscosity decreases now we'll draw a graph for them now we'll draw a graph for them see take shear stress along the ha huh, shear stress tau in pascal and here you take a velocity gradient along the x axis okay velocity gradient x what is the unit unit is second inverse what is the unit of velocity gradient ha huh, second inverse okay you take velocity gradient you take your strain rate d theta by dt okay so if you draw the graph for a shear thinning fluid what happens your n is less than 1 n is less than 1 means its slope decreases if the slope decreases means how the graph will come the graph will come like this where your n is less than 1 see the slope is if you draw a tangent if you draw a tangent here the slope is more if you draw a tangent here slope is more then slope is less again less 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 slope becomes very very less so that's why how it behaves like this theek hai na so this will be the graph between shear stress and ha uh, and velocity gradient or rate of shear strain for a which fluid for a shear thinning okay so i want to draw your attention towards something what we have written we have written sir tau is equal to k du by dy to the power n okay check your notes if you have not checked it okay so now take logarithm on both the sides take ln ln tau is equal to what will happen sir ln k plus n plus n du by dy yes sir no bolo plus n du by dy this implies try what is our straight line equation y equal to mx plus c where m is the slope m is the slope and c is your y intercept okay c is the y intercept so try to form like this your ln tau will become ha huh, n du by dy plus ln k correct as ln tau equal to your n du by dy ln k that means i got now i i have converted this graph i have converted this graph into a straight line equation so how how my graph will be now now my graph will look like this again okay, this is my tau in pascal this is my du by dy 
in second invert now this is the graph this is the graph and this is your y intercept ln k ln k or 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 you write c here now this is the slope and n is the slope n is the slope that is equal to nothing but your n so now this graph this graph we have ha huh, converted into a straight line converted into a straight line so this will be ln tau the graph which means ln tau and du by dy theek hai okay so what we did we spoke about shear thinning fluids we spoke about shear thinning fluids and we come to know that we came to know that okay your uh, i'm applying ln right yes are you are doing mistake why you are not telling this is ln du du by dy n ln du by dy this is ln du by dy okay so ha huh. so what we have done is the shear thinning fluid where viscosity decreases with force we discussed why it decreases with force then we have drawn a graph for the shear thinning fluid and the graph we have come, we have took the log of the graph so that we will get a straight line so that we will get a straight line equation theek hai sir example shear thinning ka some interesting example do let us take the example of a frog catching its prey frog catching its prey what is frog does frog rolls out its tongue frog rolls out its tongue so when it rolls out its trunk to catch its prey you know how much times the force it increases the force it applies is 12 times the gravitational force acting on the prey how many how many times 12 times the gravitational force acting on the prey that much force it applies so when it increases apply the force what happens to the saliva the saliva decreases how many times nearly 50 times decreases by application of force which fluid shear thinning fluid which fluid saliva of a frog shear thinning fluid so then when the saliva adheres to the prey when the saliva adheres to the prey it becomes more viscous more dense and it rolls in and that's it catches its prey understood shear thinning fluid see so much of example is there interesting theek okay. hai so okay sorry for this mistake this is ln du by dy it's ln du by dy n ln du by dy okay i hope you won't mind this okay but definitely mathematics will mind if i do such kind of mistakes theek okay. so uh, this is your shear thinning this is your shear thinning fluid so the next topic we are going to discuss is your shear thickening fluid next topic is your shear thickening fluid okay so i am now er erasing this now tell me shear thickening fluids what happens in shear thickening fluids sir in shear thickening fluid viscosity increases viscosity increases with the application of force its n which is flow behavior index is greater than 1 its n which is the flow behavior index is greater than 1 okay and graph graph you will teach sir we know we will you will teach okay graph so so what we are going to do is Hmm. So viscosity what happens here increases with force viscosity increases with force and is greater than 1 this kind of fluid we also call it dilatant fluid also known as your dilatant fluid also known as your dilatant fluid okay example so do you also already say corn your corn starch solution yes sir no you already we have already discussed the ha huh, corn starch solution theek okay. hai now no see shear thinning fluid one more example is your printer ring shear thinning shear thinning not thickening printer ring see you take a atm slip or you take some you know um you will go you swipe your card they will give you a uh, what do you call invoice you take that okay you keep it on your purse what will find after one month what will happen the with the for the letters the letters would have faded away because viscosity decreased 
Continuously it comes in contact with shear, right? So viscosity decreases and the letters fade away. Shear thinning, fluid printer, right? Shear thinning fluid. Okay. So dilatant fluid. So constant. Now what happens when they are at rest? See first. Let me take this example of a cornstarch. Cornstarch is a what? It's water solution. Means it has solute, okay? Solute and it has water. Okay. So let us say a cornstarch solution looks like this when at rest. So these are my what? Conch ha, molecules. These are normally rectangular shaped and bigger one. They are the bigger ones. Solid, na? They are solid. So they are the bigger ones. Okay. Now we have water molecules also here because it's a solution. I told you already. So we have water molecules. Let us say these are the water molecules. So how they are, sir? They are disorderly or randomly scattered when at rest. They are randomly scattered when at rest. That is randomly. Scattered. Now, I when they are flowing, first case, case one, I am applying small force. I am applying small force. I am not increasing more force. I am applying small force. So when I apply a small amount of solid blocks are there now, they will roll over. The solid blocks are nothing. What happens? They will roll over the water molecule. They will roll over the water molecule, and that's why, that's why, huh? What happens is. When you apply small amount of force, it behaves like a liquid only. That means it doesn't give me much change in the viscosity. Like me, my viscosity is not increasing good, more, like more enough. So what will happen? They will be here, here, little like this, somewhere. Okay. But the more water molecules I find on the top, what I'll find? I'll find more water molecule. On the top here. So when I am applying the force, huh, the water part takes care. Water small force. When I am applying the small force, the water part takes care of the flow. So I don't find very huge change. I don't find a huge change in your viscosity. But what happens when the case B? What happens when I I apply large force? Means I increase my force. As soon as I increase the force, what will happen? The solid blocks will come to the surface. Solid blocks will come to the surface, and they will resist the force. They will resist the force, hence viscosity increase. So, corn starch solution, if you take a hammer and you hit it, okay, it will the hammer also will bounce back because it it will offer you that much of resistance. It will offer you that much of resistance. Corn starch, your quick sand, your quick sand. You have watched. You might have watched in some of the movies. Quick sand. If you stand, what will happen? It will go down, 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 down. Correct. But in, so, but you can actually jump. You can jump. You can run. You can hammer it. Nothing like that. It will offer you resistance. The friction will be more so that you can run around, run in, in a quick sand also. Okay. You can run in a corn starch also. You can jump in the corn starch also. Okay. So corn starch, quick sand. So when you apply the large force. When you apply the large force, what happens is, okay, in a thermodynamically favored condition, thermodynamically favored condition, they will orient, or they will order themselves in a thermodynamically favored condition. So, when you are applying a large amount of force, what I see is the Bigger molecules, that is the solute molecules, that is the solid molecules, will come to the surface and will oppose the force. Whereas your water molecules, okay, will come down. So they are creating a strong resistance on the surface when you are applying the force. So what I am having here, I am having more and more solid, more and more solid. So F large, F large. Understood. So how they are orienting? Thermodynamically, thermodynamically, ah, huh? favored, favored orientation. They order themselves. They organize themselves. Organize themselves 
in the thermodynamically favored orientation when the f large you are applying large amount of force understood so that's why that's why what happens your viscosity increases when the force in increases if you more the force the viscosity will be more more okay more the force the viscosity will be more now if we draw its graph now if we are drawing its graph okay this graph what happens your slope increases here slope is zero slope zero more slope if we draw a tangent here what happens nearly zero then it increases it increases it increases so as you go over your slope increases so that's why your n is greater than 1 this is the graph between shear stress along y axis and the velocity gradient or shear gradient along the x axis sorry velocity gradient or your uh, rate of shear strain d theta by dt or your velocity gradient along the x axis so what happens to your shear strain ha huh? what happens to your viscosity with application of force viscosity increases viscosity increases sir tell it's one of its interesting application of a shear filling fluid see body armor body armor so you use bullet proof vest right like soldiers use bullet proof vest right so the bullet proof vest is normally made up of steel or any composite even if you make it any metal or you make from a from a composite the weight is more okay the weight is any or it's more so movement is difficult so the movement is difficult so that is one problem second is even if you are using a you know steel or a iron or a metal thing it may not the bullet may not pierce through your the bullet may not pierce through the uh uh metal sheet but it definitely deform the metal sheet when it deform the metal sheet the deformation is backward because bullet is coming and hitting towards the front understood okay so the inertia the impulse is from this side so it will go backward it will rupture towards the back and what is there behind that your ribs okay or your bone so there is a chance it will break your bone so that's why now currently the research is going on to develop a shear thickening fluid to develop shear thickening fluid this is your shear thickening fluid we are shear thinning already we have studied okay to so develop a shear thickening fluid so that with the application of force viscosity increases it gives high resistance it behaves like a solid so you have a fluid a vest of fluid and you hit a bullet when you hit a bullet what will happen the bullet will go and hit at a very high force when it apply at a high force it will resist it when there is no force it will be like fluid so it will be very less weight and easily maneuverable okay and you can carry anywhere but still this is not in the market research is going on there is high level of research is going on on to somehow develop a fluid a shear thickening fluid which can be used for body armors which can be used for body armors okay maybe some of you in future will become some research scientist and will develop this kind of stuff okay okay so this is your shear thickening fluid shear thickening fluid we also call it as what what we call it as sir we call it as dilatant fluid we also call it as what dilatant fluid okay understood very very good noted down noted noted now let me draw a graph for this all what newtonian fluid and the shear thickening fluid and the shear thinning fluid if i draw a graph for the shear thickening fluid and the shear thinning fluid by taking viscosity by taking a uh, viscosity along the y axis and the rate of shear along so viscosity along the y axis and the rate of shear along the x axis how it how i'll get it hmm how the graph i'll get anyone any any what like okay so now i'm drawing a graph i'm taking along the x axis shear rate what i'm taking shear rate along the y axis i'm taking what viscosity i'm taking viscosity theta so what happens newtonian fluid for newtonian fluid your viscosity is constant neither increasing nor decreasing by the application of shear rate 
But if I apply the shear rate, what happens to the viscosity of shear thickening fluid? It increases. Viscosity of shear thinning fluid, it decreases. So viscosity decreases for shear thinning fluid by the application of shear and huh, viscosity increases for shear thickening fluid. Okay. So here I write what? Shear thinning fluid. And this is your shear huh, thickening fluid. Okay. Note it down. So the viscosity huh, decreases with the application of shear rate. We call shear thinning fluid, and the viscosity increases with huh, shear rate. We call it as shear thickening fluid. Okay, understood? Got it? So Newtonian fluid, non-Newtonian fluid. Two kinds of non-Newtonian fluid we have studied: shear thickening fluid and shear thinning fluid. Shear thickening fluid and shear thinning fluid. Okay. So there are some more also non-Newtonian fluid. For example, for example, we wrote the formula, na? What we wrote? Tau equal to tau in. There are. Okay. So you are noted it down. Okay. So there is one more type of fluid. There are some more type of fluid. They are nothing but your Bingham's plastic fluid, the Bingham's plastic fluid, and hexotropic fluid and rheopectic fluid. Rheopectic fluid, hexotropic fluid, and Bingham's plastic fluid. If you remember, I told you. Oswald, Sir Oswald, they, uh, will gave an equation that is tau is equal to tau yield plus eta du by dy. This is what he gave the equation, and we wrote eta is equal to k du by dy to the power n minus one. This is what we have wrote. So in all these cases, till now what we have discussed. We discuss the tau yield is zero. That is, no shear stress is required. Is required to overcome to overcome the viscosity barrier here. But in which case, in the dilatant fluid and the pseudo plastic fluid. But there are certain kinds of fluid where where you need a initial force. You need some initial force to increase the fluidity of the tau for the movement. For example, your Bingham's plastic fluid. Bingham's plastic fluid. This fluid is very near to Newtonian fluid. This fluid behaves like a Newtonian fluid only, but but it needs some initial force. It needs some initial force to move. For example, sir, you take your toothpaste. You keep your toothpaste tube open and keep it you know vertical. Don't apply the force. Will your toothpaste will come down? No, unless you apply some force. Unless you apply some force, it won't come down at all. But once it comes down, it will behave. Its viscosity won't be affected by the application of forces or time. So it behaves like a Newtonian fluid, but it needs some needs some force, some stress to overcome the initial, you know, of, uh, viscosity barrier. Barrier. So we'll draw the graph. Then how we'll draw the graph for them? See, like a Newtonian fluid only, but tau. Versus du by dy unit second, it's unit Pascal, but they need to overcome this. That's why we call tau t. So many books. This in other books you may find this equation as tau star is equal to tau star, tau naught plus this. Okay, they may write like this also, but no issues. Whatever you are writing, you need to understand. Okay, here our tau. Is tau star is tau and tau naught is nothing but tau. Okay, yeah, n equal to n equal to one. Which fluid? Bingham's plastic fluid. What are the example we studied? Huh? I told you CuA sludge layer of clay. Take clay. Sir, you said toothpaste. Yes. Take toothpaste. Take toothpaste. These cases. This will behave like a huh? How it will behave? Like a Newtonian fluid only, but it needs some initial force to overcome the viscous barrier, and this viscosity is uniform. It does not change much with the forces. So the next one is your Bingham's plastic fluid. So whatever we have studied till now, okay, Bingham's plastic fluid or your texo or your uh, uh, what you call uh, dilatant fluid or your pseudo plastic fluid. it they are independent of time time doesn't have any role to play 
either you apply the force they will increase the viscosity or you apply the force they will decrease the viscosity okay so now there is one more type of uh, fluid known as your thexotropic fluid what happens in a thexotropic fluid is see the best example of a thexotropic fluid is your printer ring or girls will you know relate it like uh, what do you call their lipstick or your uh, nail nail polish paint or boys for you your what do you call body odor do what happens come on what you'll find in these kind of cases even if it is you know your lipstick or nail polish or your printer inks just before when i gave you an example okay by the passage of time the slip the slip which slip atm slip or the invoice you have kept in your purse and without disturbing it, it the letters will start fading that means the viscosity decrease in sheer thing it acted like a sheer thinning but here you have not applied force excuse me <coughs> here you have not applied the force only time that means by the passage of time by the passage of time with time what happens your viscosity decreases it behaves like a sheer thinning that kind of that kind of ha huh, fluid we call it as thexotropic fluid fluid ha huh, they are here the viscosity is a function of time they are time dependent that is with time with time what happens to the viscosity the viscosity decreases viscosity decreases you take a paint brush paint brush you start paint this is actually shear thinning you apply the shear you apply the shear apply you are applying the forces and leave it what happens it becomes thin shear thinning fluid leave it leave it it will become hard and after some time the viscosity is decreasing only okay so with time the viscosity decrease just we call them what shear thinning fluid for example your printer ink thexotropic okay fluid uh, sorry printer ink okay your nail polish ha uh, your lipstick these all are your example of thexotropic fluid okay see you you take your nail polish okay apply it leave it for some time once to you know to gloss to glow it needs some time after some time the viscosity decreases then only you will find the glossy things of your nail polish okay so if you will draw the graph the so draw the graph what how it will be it will be like this here n is less than 1 see a thinning okay see shear thickening shear thinning very simple viscosity increases with force shear thickening viscosity decreases with force shear thinning okay with time viscosity decreases thexotropic with time viscosity increases rheopactic so this is your tau yield tau yield n is less than 1 we are taking shear stress along the x axis and velocity gradient or the shear strain along the x axis okay shear stress along the y axis tau unit is pascal okay this is your ha huh, thexotropic fluid the next kind of fluid is your rheopactic fluid the next kind of fluid is the rheopactic fluid what happens in a rheo here also viscosity is a function of time what happens here ha huh, with time what happens to the viscosity viscosity increases viscosity increases you would take your putty wo jo ball paint karte ho na jk wall putty or some putty you use that you take and mix in the water what happens after some time what you find it becomes thick after some time what it becomes the liquid becomes thick on that means its viscosity is increasing okay gypsum solution bentonite solution this is the example for example gypsum solution or bentonite solution so what happens to your n here so what happens to the n n is greater than 1 so if you draw the graph if you draw the graph it will be like this so n greater than 1 again this is what your tau yield tau yield so we are taking tau in pascal along y axis and d theta by dt or du by dy along x axis what is its unit unit is second inverse 
ठीक है सो टावर एन इज ग्रेटर देन वन दैट मीन्स विस्कोसिटी इंक्रीजेस विथ पासेज ऑफ टाइम ठीक है सो दिस इज योर टोटल न्यूटनियम फ्लूड एंड नॉन न्यूटनियम फ्लूड ठीक है नाउ सर सो मेनी ग्राफ्स यू हैव ड्रॉन कैन यू कंबाइन एवरी ग्राफ इन टू वन ग्राफ ऑफकोर्स वी कैन डू ऑफ कोर्स वी कैन डू सो द नेक्स्ट इज ना आई गोला हाँ draw all the graphs in a single graph itself so that you will understand better okay so we studied two types of fluid newtonian fluid non newtonian fluid in non newtonian fluid we also studied two types of fluid shear thickening fluid shear thinning fluids okay both this in non newtonian fluid our ha huh, being has plastic fluid and ha huh, and your pseudo plastic fluid which is a shear thinning fluid and dilatant fluid which is a shear thickening fluid okay they all are time independent they are not a function of time whether whereas the ha huh, whereas the thixotropic fluid and the rheopectic fluid as are a function of time with time the viscosity of rheopectic fluid increases whereas with time the viscosity of thixotropic fluid decreases okay so i will write our main equation here tau is equal to tau e plus eta ha huh, du by d by when eta is equal to k du by t y to the power n minus 1 n minus 1 or tau is equal to tau e plus plus k du by dy to the power n k du by dy to the power n for ha huh, for correct uh, your newtonian fluid for your newtonian fluid your tau e is equal to 0 ha huh, k and n are 1 k and n are 1 which flow which fluid which fluid for your ha huh, newtonian fluid and then Newtonian fluid. So k n n equal to one. So what is your equation? We can. So my equation can tau is equal to. Ah, huh, okay, is equal to mu. K is equal to mu and n equal to one. So it becomes mu du by d. Mu du by d by for your Newtonian fluid. For your Bingham's plastic fluid. For your Bingham's ah huh, plastic fluid, we have tau it. We have tau yield. Tau yield is not zero. Some value is there. Tau yield is a non-zero value. Okay. And let us say if k equal to mu, n is also equal to one. So tau is equal to tau yield plus mu du by dy. Which fluid? Which fluid? Your ah uh, Bingham's plastic fluid. For your Bingham's plastic fluid. Next, next we will read about your which pseudo plastic fluid. Okay. Pseudo plastic fluid. What happens in a pseudo plastic fluid? So pseudo plastic fluid tau yield is zero. Tau yield is zero. Sir, k is equal to let us say mu and n is less than one. So your equation becomes mu du by dy to the power ha huh, n which is less than one. N which is less than. But sir, why you are not writing k? You write here k. No problem. You write here k, no problem. Flow consistency index. Okay, then we'll write for your dilatant fluid. For your dilatant fluid, dilatant fluid. What happens to your tau yield? Sir, tau yield is zero. Tau yield is zero. Your k is equal to right mu. Okay, and n is nothing but greater than one. N is greater than one. So the formula is tau is equal to, ha, huh, tau is equal to mu. du by dy to the power this comes in exam ha huh? remember i am not teaching like that only they will give you the value of n or they will give you how uh, the viscosity is varying with respect to forces applied and they will ask you which kind of which kind of ha huh, fluid is this that they will ask so the answer is lying in the n only you see n is equal to 1 don't go and write answer newtonian fluid quickly check whether there is some tau yield or not If n is equal to one, tau yield is there. You are going to write Bingham plastic fluid. Bingham plastic fluid. Similarly, similarly, rheopectic. Similarly, your thixotropic fluid. Thixotropic fluid. 
see your tau yield is not zero here tau yield is a non zero value okay and your k is equal to mu ha huh? k is equal to thexotropic fluid your k is equal to mu and n is less than 1 so the equation tau is equal to tau yield plus mu du by dy where n is less than 1 where n is less than 1 now your rheopactic fluid your rheopactic fluid what happens your tau yield is not zero tau yield is a not zero value k is equal to mu n is greater than 1 and tau is equal to tau yield plus mu du by dy to the power n greater than 1 so that's why don't get confused i mean exam suppose they have given k is equal to mu and n is less than 1 okay don't jump and write it's a pseudo plastic fluid no check whether there is a non zero tau yield is present means initial forces are required to overcome the viscosity barrier yes or no if it is yes it's a thexotropic fluid okay it's a thexotropic fluid if if it is what you call zero then it is your what pseudo plastic pseudo plastic fluid okay similarly you check between dielectric and fluid and rheopactic fluids they are kind of same only but what is the difference what is the difference ha huh? there is some tau yield value here there is some tau yield value here now note it down pause the video and note it down okay so now this all things will put into a graph all things we are going to put into a single graph so you if you'll excuse me i just want to erase this okay this portion i want to erase that you can write below i need some space okay good good you can write it here okay your your practic so tau l tau l is not zero k is equal to mu n greater than 1 tau is equal to tau l plus mu du by dy where n is greater than 1 so everything now i'll put into a single graph okay so the graph we are discussing between shear stress along ha uh, which axis along y axis and your d theta by dt or du by dy unit is second inverse along x axis okay if i draw this graph ha huh, if i draw a graph let us say your line falls along the x axis that means no shear no shear at all I mean when the fluid is at rest with the application of smallest shear force it deform continuously smaller shear force it deform continuously what we call it we call it ideal fluid what we call it ideal fluid however any real fluid any real fluid will show some kind of resistance some kind of resistance will be there in any real fluid in ideal fluid with the smallest amount of shear force with the smallest amount of shear force it will deform like a plastic continuously plastic deformation it will show means it won't show any resistance at all so that's why the graph is ha huh, graph is along the x axis along the x axis that is velocity gradient or rate of shear stress axis similarly similarly if no matter what force you apply it won't show any any deformation at all no deformation it will show we call them ideal solid we call them what ideal solid ideal solid means they won't show any form of deformation at all they won't show any form of deformation at all ठीक है सो नाउ बिटवीन आइडियल सॉलिड आइडियल फ्लूइड आवर रियल फ्लूइड एग्जिस्ट बिटवीन दिस आइडियल फ्लूइड एंड आइडियल सॉलिड आवर रियल फ्लूइड एग्जिस्ट दिस न्यूटनियन फ्लूइड नॉन न्यूटनियन फ्लूइड ऑल आर आवर रियल फ्लूइड्स ओके मींस दे शो रेजिस्टेंस दे शो सम शियर स्ट्रेस दे डेवलप सम रेजिस्टेंस ओके टू द फोर्स सो नाउ हाउ वी डिस्कस दिस इज आवर न्यूटनियन फ्लूइड दिस इज माय न्यूटनियन Fluid. What is the n value? I am not writing d t. Okay, I will just write n f. Okay, here n is equal to one. Now, how was my graph for the pseudo plastic fluid? This was the graph for the pseudo plastic fluid. How was the graph for the dilated fluid? Below. Here, this n value is less than one. Sorry, greater than one. And here, 
the n value is less than 1 which kind of flow is there sir newtonian fluid which fluid is there sir dilatant fluid which fluid is there sir this is pseudo plastic fluid pseudo plastic fluid n is less than 1 newtonian fluid n equal to 1 and your dilatant fluid n is greater than 1 ठीक है very very good now we'll draw this this is what fluid sir bingham's plastic fluid you have took some portion here which we nothing but we write here tau yield we write here tau yield so what is the value of n here n is equal to 1 n equal to 1 then what thexotropic fluid so thexotropic fluid n is equal to less than 1 that is viscosity decreases that is viscosity decreases with time and sir this is my Rheopactic fluid, rheopactic fluid n is greater than 1, that is viscosity increases with time. So this is your huh, Bingham's plastic fluid, this is your huh, thexotropic fluid, this is your rheopactic fluid. So everything we have drawn in a single, single graph. Okay, understood, understood, pause the video and note it down. Come on, pause the video and note it down. Very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. If you are going to classify the fluids, the fluids we are going to classify into two types. One is your ideal fluid or perfect fluid. They are ideal fluid or perfect fluid. Means what? They are non-viscous. Non-viscous means they do not offer any resistance to flow. Okay. They are frictionless, incompressible. That is density, do not change. That means when they are incompressible, bulk modulus becomes infinity. Because they do not offer any shear, so no shear is generated, hence their more circle is a point. Hence their more circle is a point. Example of ideal fluid, no such fluid. Anything ideal does not exist in the real world. Okay? The fluid will by default will offer some viscosity. They will definitely will have viscosity. If they have, they do not have viscosity, that kind of I don't know any fluid exist which do not offer resistance or which do not have viscosity. Okay. So, in a real world, the viscosity will be there. Pakka every fluid has viscosity. That is, they offer resistance to, that is, they offer resistance to shear. Okay. So, this kind of real fluid is two types. One is your Newtonian fluid, which we discussed. Huh? What we have discussed, Newtonian fluid. Sir, you have to, Newtonian fluid, predictable fluid flow. Okay, with the application of forces, viscosity does not change and they follow the over Newton's law of viscosity. For non-Newtonian flow, this, there are two types, time independent, time independent. Remember, the study of non-Newtonian flow is known as rheology. Rheology, what? The study of non-Newtonian so, rheology, you can do your masters in rheology itself. Okay, that much big chapter it is. So, the study of non-Newtonian flow is known as rheology. Two types. One is time independent, one is time dependent. Okay, here the viscosity is a function of I told you forces and time. With forces, the viscosity increases, shear thickening. With forces, the viscosity decreases, shear thinning. With time, huh, with time, viscosity increases. Viscosity increases with time what we call them huh what we call them when the viscosity increases with time so we call them rheopactic fluid what happens to the viscosity when they are decreases with time so we call them thexotropic fluid similarly we have pseudoplastic fluid which is also known as shear thinning fluid huh dilatant fluid with shear thickening fluid and we have bingham plastic fluid which is nearly equal to nearly equivalent to your newtonian fluid provided it has some tau it it needs some huh some extra shear extra force over in order to overcome the viscosity barrier okay now pause the video and note it down pause the video note it down so this is for your quick summary and to note it down about the different fluids that is dilatant fluid pseudoplastic fluid bingham plastic fluid rheopactic fluid and thexotropic fluid with their examples okay now note it down fast pause the video and note it down 
with the Newtonian and non-Newtonian fluid and types of fluid, we have come to end of our chapter 1 that is properties of fluid. So whatever the properties we have discussed, their unit and dimension we are going to write and we are good with this chapter. Okay? I hope you understood whatever you didn't understand, please go through the lectures again and any doubts you please write in the comment section. The good thing about online classes is you can go, you can repeat the classes again and again you can understand. The demerit is we do not have a live interaction. So I won't be knowing your doubts unless you comment that on the comment box. Please feel free to write any constructive suggestions or doubts in the comment box. I will be happy to reply to them. Okay. So now what are the properties we study? So we study specific mass or mass density that the unit is kg per meter cube, dimension is ml minus 3, we study specific weight or weight density, gamma, what we study is gamma equal to rho into g, we study that is newton per meter cube, m l minus 2, t minus 2, we study specific gravity or relative density, that is density of matter by density water, no units, it is a dimensionless quantity, specific volume is 1 by rho, this is nothing but your 1 by rho, that is rho into V equal to 1, we have studied meter cube per kg, kg or L minus 1, L3. Next, bulk modulus, K, what we studied, sir, it is delta P by huh, volumetric strain or delta P by density strain. So, these are no units, so it has the unit of the pressure itself, that is Pascal or Newton per meter square, ML minus 1, T minus 2. Compressibility, beta is nothing but 1 by bulk modulus, so its dimension is ML minus 1, huh? M L minus 1, what is this? Compressibility M L minus 1 T minus 2. Okay. Uh, we are going correct, right? This is specific volume. This is bulk modulus. Okay, 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 okay. This is bulk modulus. This is compressibility. Okay. This is compressibility, bulk modulus. Okay. So next is dynamic viscosity, mu. That is Pascal second of voice. What we have studied? M L minus 1, T minus 1. This is important. Remember, dynamic viscosity, kinematic viscosity, surface tension. In exam, these three huh, dimensions they are normally asking. So, dynamic viscosity, Pascal second or voice, M L minus 1, T minus 1. Kinematic viscosity, nu, nu is called what? Your nu by rho that is meter square per second or stoke ha huh? 1 meter square per second equal to how many stoke 10 to the power 4 stoke 1 pascal second equal to how many poise 10 poise okay that is ha huh? l square t minus 1 surface tension it's newton per meter or joule per meter square that is m t minus 2 vapor pressure vapor pressure again is pressure unit pascal or newton per meter square m l minus 1 t minus Two. So, these are the units and dimensions. Remember, unit and dimension you may get a question. So, I hope with this you understood everything and please go through this chapter again. The next chapters will be our fluid statics. I assume you have gone through the fluid properties, then you go for the fluid statics subject. Okay? So, again, thanks for watching and Please do like, share and subscribe with your friend and press the bell icon so that you will never miss an update from Atlas classes. Okay? Have a good day. Thanks a lot.